Hi everyone. Most of us have to watch costs when we're doing our crafting and a way to get the most out of your dies is using partial die cutting which is actually incredibly fun to do and the only limit is your imagination. So I'm just going to show you what I've been doing with a couple of dies. So here I've got a tree die and I've got a Christmas frame die and by using little bits of each I'm able to create new scenes and this is the front page that I'm going to have in a shadow box project that I'm making and I'm going to show you how I managed to achieve that from both these dies. It really is quite fun. You'll have to excuse the awful pink cardstock, it's very old, but this is how it's done. There's no real secret to partial die cutting techniques but what you do have to do is make stacking blocks of card and so that you can basically take just press down on the bit that you want to die cut so for example here I've got little 4.8 cards centimeter squared and I've just cut them out of my old birthday cards and I've stacked them together in threes with a few singles as well because you never quite know how many cards you're going to need you've got to make sure you've got sufficient height in your stack that the only bit of the die that's being cut is the bit that you want and to do that you need a reasonable height of your stack and I would suggest that you do need to be on the base plate of your cutting machine because if you're just on the embossing tab often you do that's precisely what you get from the rest of the die a bit of embossing and the height of your stack is determined by obviously the thinness of the die or the thickness of the die uh, the card that you're using the card that you've made your stack from and you can use it from anything so I also have little single sheets as well so that I can take or remove as I need and this little small square is actually very useful and it can be used in to make multiple cuts from the same die. So this one is a little larger 6.8 and again it's exactly the same and sometimes you just want to have a frame and your die is bigger than that and you don't want anything more than this size to be cut out in the middle so it's quite good to have quite a number of um, squares or rectangles whatever you want to use so that you can cut to the sizes that you want this is also quite a useful little stack because it's quite thin and I can um, utilize it for cutting out little bits where I don't want much width now you it's worthwhile having some what I call slightly more precision dies so this one which I'll show you later will be used to cut um, a frame without the edge and that's very important so it's important to get that size quite right and that's what I would call my precision stack uh, mostly precision isn't the name of the game and I've got some bigger squares I've got bigger ovals and all of these are made out of scrap card um, and bigger squares and finally because I'm making a shadow box I want the all the framing to be within a 12.8 square so I've got that one too and it's a question of playing around and seeing what works for you and I'm going to show you just a few examples I thought I'd quickly show you how I make my stacks and I've just taken these. I use my double tape runner but you could use anything, Pritt stick or um, PVA glue and I do them in little groups of three because that enables me to increase and decrease the stacks quite easily. So just whiz over, get those things reasonably accurately positioned so that your square is the size you think it is and there we are, it's done and just carry on in that way and you've got a stack. So now I'm just going to show you how I use my dies and this is the Wintertide die by Amy Designs and I want to use just a little bit of it and I've just put a circle or a rough shape round the bush and the tree that I want to use and in order to be able to do that I need to position it carefully on the base plate on top of my cardstock and I'm just using my very small square that is firmly positioned. I will then add the cutting plate on top of that and run it through my Sizzix and this is the end result a little bush and a tree not very exciting you might think but actually it's a start 
And so the next die I'm going to use is the tree, and it is the tree and not none of the little bits and pieces that come with it. And by altering its position around the card, I'm able to get different effects. So here I am putting it on the side, and this I want for my biggest um, shadow box panel. So I'm going to be using my 12.8 square stack um, to put on top of it as you can see here then I'll put the cutting plate on top of that again and run it through the big shot and this is the end result a partial die cut and so that'll be a tree branch just coming into the center and so by moving it around I'm able to get the trees where I want them to be partially cut out and again it doesn't look dramatically attractive but I am going to be cutting out the middle so I've gone back to the um, winter tide design again and I just want a little bit of bush on the opposite side and I want it at the bottom of my shadow box panel. So again I'm just positioning the die with my little square over the top so that I can just get that bit of bush that I want and run it through the Sizzix machine and there you see I've got the bush. As you can see I've also got a skate but that doesn't matter because that's in the bit that I'm going to be cutting out and will discard. So now what I've got to do is cut out the centre and this is where you can be quite creative with your scissors. Obviously you've got to connect one partial die cut to another and just get into the little intricate corners but you can also make nice ground shapes as well and I think straight lines are, are definitely a no for this. So I don't have to worry about being particularly precise about my cutting just so long as each one of those dies connects to the other and I'm able to take out the central portion which is what I don't want and it's as you're doing that that your scene starts to come together and you realize that partial die cutting is actually quite a creative little skill to have and all down to those little stacked cards that make such a difference so once I've got into those corners I can free up the center and you can finally see the scene there's a little bit of trimming to be done on the bush and the tree but aside from that it's all together and looks very neat and I'm ready then to for the front piece of my shadow box so now I'm just going to show you how I use that front panel. This is just a mock-up in that glorious pink card, but basically it's a plan for my shadow box using multiple partial die cuts and I will make a video of it as well. So on to doing the more precision die, partial die cutting. And here I've got a set of dies where I want to use the second largest, which when it is cut out, produces a very pretty little border with some fine detail inside. What I want to do is have that fine detail, but within the center of a card. And in order to do that, I need to make some precision blocks. So how to make these blocks? Well, with this framelit, the only bit that I don't want cutting is this I should have popped out on the right side. The only bit I don't want cutting is this edge because obviously that cuts out the frame and I want it to be part of the card. So I'm going to make a block that just sits inside. And the way to do that is to take your framelit. This is a old Christmas card, I think. Um, and just trace around using that as a template. And having done that, all you need to do is cut that out following the inside of the frame. So I'm just going to go around and it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the great thing, which is just as well since I'm not. And it's just a question of going around it. So once you've just trimmed round it, just check that it fits very nicely within that uh, rim of the die. And then you can just cut out that, use that as a template, cut out round the line and use scrap bits of card to build up your stack. So first of all, you have your die cutting machine and have the base plate, don't use the tabs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put cutting plate on the base. Then I'm going to put the card that I want to cut then I'm taking my frame and I'm going to put it the cut side down I want it to be fairly central 
that looks about right and so because I don't want it to move I have discovered some tape that I can remove so I'm just going to stick that in place So the next thing I'm going to do is I've cut out my oval bits of card which I've stuck together and I'm just going to place them so that they, it's inside the die so I'm not pressing on any of the edge because I don't want to cut out that bit. And I've got six pieces of card there which actually I don't think are going to be quite high enough so I'm going to add a little bit of weight from a couple of others. So that one once you're above, you don't actually have to have the same shape. So I'm just adding a couple more bits over the top. And I so say you can use anything you like, really. And then finally, I'm going to put the top cutting plate to, and my sandwich is then complete. Try and make sure that's straight and then just run it through the big shot. Now that actually is resistant. And that means that I've put too much card on, so I am going to take a piece off and see how that runs through. You want enough pressure to be able to get the die cut to actually cut, but not so much that you can't actually get it through the machine, and that's perfect. So you have to play around because it does all depend on your card sizes and your die size and everything else as to exactly how much you need. And I'm going to take it through a couple more times just to be sure that it's cut cleanly all the way through. And then I bring it back to base. And then what I can do next is take that off. And I'm just going to lift up my card because it's not too late to rectify it. If you haven't cut all the way through, then now's your chance to redo it. But actually, that has cut through very well indeed. So I'm now going to just take the die. And as you see, it's cut quite well. I've now got to remove this inner bit and it is going to require just a little bit of snipping at the bottom um, and a tiny bit at the top. So once you've snipped away the middle, this is what you're left with, which I think is a very pretty cut out section. And how I've used it is in a bridge card featuring butterflies that I've made for my sister's birthday. If you want to see how a similar card is made, do have a look on my blog where I show how to make this closed in butterfly bridge card. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed finding out how partial dies can make such a difference and I hope you find inspiration and have a wonderful time with your projects too. So thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon.